Yeah, yeah, we had everybody out with it. Like I say, down Brimley, so I used to work down there a bit. And I'm always remember when I was boys. And he used to come down the village to see his sheep. And he used to take us for rides around in his field in his home in Minx cars, seeing his sheep. And he always used to have foxes mints. And he always used to go as a foxes mint. And he used to ride around in Ball Field, be the pub, a big field. And he's a little man car, seeing the sheep. Yeah, and ton of, ton of level field. Or a four wheel drive. No, four, no, or just a two wheel drive car. Yes, I suppose you just jump in. He said, I'll take you for a ride around the field. And he used to give us foxes mints. He always used to have that in his car. And he come down there one day, his little Fords and Dexter, pulling up outside the pub because there's snow in there, isn't it, outside the pub. He couldn't have put the brake on. He must have left it in gear. We were there playing. All of a sudden, you see the tractor come back, stop. And he come back a bit further, stop. He hadn't put the brake. He hadn't put the handbrake on. Just left it in gear. So we went in, told him. I said, "You know, your tractor's on the move." And he just left it in gear. He say, "Lucky, lucky, really." He could have ran right across the road and in Lorne House and Plenty Garden. When you left school, what what was your aim? What did you do then? Come work up on this farm here. Just before I left school, you see, I used to cycle up here most nights on my bicycle. And uh, I got home from school one night, and my mother saw her, so I got a bit of bad news to tell you. And I said, what's that? I said, Lloyd's father dropped dead in the orchard up there. But Mrs. Ayres still wants you to come up tonight. So I said, all right. So anyway, so I cycled up. I got out the end of the lane there, and I cycled over and back, over and back, and then I actually plucked up courage and come in here. But yeah. So I've been coming here for years, really. So what jobs were you doing in those days? Feeding up the animals, ploughing, all sorts, you know, cultivation work, all sorts, really. Yeah. Hedging. What age were you when you first drove a tractor then? Well, I think I was probably about, probably 11 year old when I come up there, and there was a chap there working, he said, I think it's about time you'd learn to drive a tractor. And we were picking up bales up there, so I sat on the tractor and just drove along very slowly. We'll say, pitch the bales up. All done with your hand then, you know, not tractors and looters like the day. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, days. pitchfork, you know. Yeah. yeah. So farming in those days, it was a very different activity, wasn't it? Oh, it was yeah. Much more community. Oh, yeah. And um, like you say, back then, combine, it was all sacks back then. What they call it, we had squirrel sacks, Hessian sacks. We used to go out to um, Shapcott, out Bishop's Nipton, and hire these sacks. And uh, then say, use them, then take them back. A lot of things that happened in those days you wouldn't get away with today. No. I mean, no, we've all done it. I've, I've done it myself. We used to um, sheep there, you know, put the tractor in low gear, hop off, walk around the back of the box and fork them out to the sheep like that there. Like, so you only want the bloody tractor to hop out of gear, it'd be gone, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, poor old Bob Radford next door, he nearly got killed doing that. Because we used to grow Swedes, put them in the link box, and go out in the field, put the tractor in like bottom gear, have the box so far off the ground, get out, and go behind and chuck the Swedes out to the sheep. Anyway, in Woodhouse, in front of the house, there's a field and it got like gullies in it where they used to water it years ago. And Bob was in there, lucky he got, he got two tractors. One of them got the back tires is full of water and the other one he got was just air and no, no water in the tires. And the water was? For water ballast to get grip, you see. And then for some reason he got the link box on this other tractor, which, well, good job he had, really. Anyway, he gets off the to chuck the Swedes out, of course he hits his bloody toe and it fell over and lucky this went where, where the, one of the dips was he must have fell in there the big back tire went right over his chest and of course and the link box come up went over and it happened because he was lying in the gully otherwise he'd have been dragged to the bottom field and probably got killed and anyway, Lloyd went in there and you could see the, like the red tire mark across his chest he was lucky, he was lucky. he never broke the ribs or nothing you know but he was very lucky fella that's been the other tractor, he probably busted his ribs and he'd been a bit of a mess, I think. But yeah, very lucky, lucky chap. So you drove a tractor when you were a kid, like 10, 11? Yeah. When did you move on to driving cars? Was that an easy transition? Well, she used to have a, I used to have a Land Rover back then. You said Austin Gypsy in Alf Kinden at work, yes. Yeah? I used to ride down me, down George, and see the sheep. And that's when the field, I was at the counter just one morning. She said, Come on, Gary, it's about time you learned to drive. So he got me driving the Austin Gypsy across the fields down there. That was, you know, something that was. How old were you then? I must have been about 15, 16, around. May have been a bit younger. How about your shooting career then? Well, I started, I started shooting. My father started learning me to shoot when I was ten. Little four, um, little four ten, fold up four ten. And father had a, 
hand flinger clay pigeon. You put a clay pigeon in, and he used to have a hand flinger and flick it up, and I used to up and pop them off. That's how it all started with me. And when I started shooting, I was left-handed, but for some reason, I don't know, I come about, but I always shoot me right hand now. Mm. Yeah. So how did it come about graduating from clays to birds? Well, father always was into that, sir. But um, I will tell you a story. I know the poor chap, he died this week, Stephen Westcott. Do you know Steve Westcott? I don't know. Well, anyway, he used to do a lot of shooting with us. And uh, we were out shooting out Twitching, Ferreton. And back then, I had a Mark, Mark 1 Escort Estate car. We all went out in my car. And he parked, and parked the car in the gateway down at Twitching there, in the field gateway. So father went up the road with a ferret, and me and Steve went up the field, put the ferret in. Rabbit come out me and Steve's side, so Steve up, bang. I don't know if he hit, I think he had the rabbit, or he missed, I don't know, whatever it was. I was trying to a bit of a tinny shot, I thought. Didn't eat more of it. Went on. Went back to our dinner. Bloody hell, was look at the back of your car. Back window was shattered. And all below was like bloody pellet marks. Steve said, God, fuck me, I've hit your car. I said, well, I said, don't worry. You take out Locke's garage out North Mountain, get it all done and I'll pay. Which he did. But, you know, frightened us, frightened me, because like you say, anybody been stood in that bloody gate would have got peppered. You know, fuck me. He shot the window out of your car. Yeah, it was all, all the glass, all like, you know, it goes all, doesn't it? Yeah. And then all the bloody, all the boot was like peppered, you know. Yeah. And did he get the rabbit? I don't think he did, you know. I think he missed the rabbit and hit my bloody car instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, fathers always shooting, well, always shooting together, father and me. You know, rabbits, pheasants, anything really.